leave uh, Stefan to share with us. Please go ahead. Thank you. So I was asked to give this brief overview um, mainly about trans the, the transcranial perspective of heterotrival uh, anatomy. Obviously, this is a lot to cover. And since I went through the schedule, there's uh, specialist talks by, by a fantastic uh, faculty. I'm quite humbled to, to, uh, to be part of this. So I try to be uh, too quick and uh, not to uh, cover too much in double. So obviously, talking about the heterotrival lesion, we're talking about the sphenoid, the petrus, and um, the um, occipital bone, and the most. Can you see my pointer here? You can't see a pointer, right? Uh, we cannot see the pointer. All right. So we're talking, um, yeah, this is OK. So we're talking about the, um, the lingual process, right? The extension of the petrus carotid, the landmark for the lateral segment, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum. We're talking about um, ovale here, foramen rotundum, um, and the, the petroclival fissure. These are the main landmarks for the petroclival lesion. And then here, the internal acoustic canal, the, um, the, um, the jugular foramen, the hypoglossal canal, then the depressions of the superior petrosal sinus and the uh, trigeminal, um, the porous trigeminus, um, and the, uh, again, the, the um, petroclival um, fissure, which is um, also the cause of the inferior petrosal sinus. And this is then the, uh, the dural coverage with all the cranial nerves protruding. You can see everything from cranial nerve three, then entering four, um, the tentorium right down to uh, 12, the uh, hypoglossus um, right down here in the condyle. I will not go, I think this has been covered earlier today, I will not um, show a lot of endoscopic pictures. I will also not follow the, the rule of third um, because this has been covered extensively. I'll show uh, some, some, some of the superior um, sphenoid and then um, cover which has not been covered so much in the uh, other talks. So this is a transcranial endoscopic perspective um, and this is in system the superior aspect of the supracellar region and here we're just talking about the superior fusial artery. You cannot see any direct um, neck-conal perforators, but um, here it's the uh, superior fusial artery coming off the supraclonoidal ICA um, and usually has three stable branches. branches and you can see the, the um, infundibular part in the chiasma, the chiasmatic branch, and then the um, branch running the optic. Usually these are uh, three stable branches. This is um, just a detail of the ocular motor triangle in preparation of the lateral cavernous sinus wall um, formed by the um, anterior and posterior petroclonal ligaments. Um, and again, this is a lateral perspective. And we see here mostly the, uh, the tent, which has been cut in all the cranial nerves, six, um, four, five, um, and right up to the optic and the uh, olfactory bulb. Um, <clears throat> So this is mostly about the, um, the, the perforators or the, uh, the branches, the interrelation trunk and the meningopubazil trunk coming off the ICA, the cavernous ICA, the C4 segment, which you can uh, sparsely see in the tentorium following four. Um, and this is just a posterior dorsal perspective uh, of the dorsal cell. You can see grubus ligament, which is the connection of the, um, of the, the petro um, sphenoidal ligament which also forms part of the rhinos canal here, six running forward. You see uh, the trigeminal ganglion reflected laterally, and you see these branches coming off uh, the carotids. You have the laterally, you have the intralateral trunk, which usually has two branches, and then you have the meningobuzil trunk, which gives off uh, the inferior hypophysial artery, then the dorsal meningeal branches to the clivus and then a varying number of tentorial and lateral tentorial marginal arteries, venous cornea, carcinari, all these arteries are coming off um, either separate or off the trunk uh, of the meningeal basil. This is uh, easier. Um, obviously, this is not a surgical perspective. This is a pure anatomical dissection uh, from, the, from a mid to uh, dissection. Um, on the left side, the, uh, the carotid has been resected just to show the infralateral trunk and the meningo-epiphysial trunk, you can see running uh, posteriorly the um, tentorial artery and running with the abducens nerve um, just under grubus ligament, you can see the um, meningo, um, the uh, tribal arteries, the meningeal 
uh, arteries, which sometimes in fetal curve or meningioma can uh, reach a significant diameter. This is one of the few um, endoscopic pictures I want to show you because it's just so much more um, um, easy to, to visualize. These are the inferior hypophyseal arteries. You can see six um, and the, the clivo branch coming up from the medial hypophyseal. And then right uh, between the uh, abducens nerve on the right side of this uh, picture, you can see the, um, the aspect of the infralateral trunk running with V1. And then once you uh, medialize the anterior genu of the ICA, you can actually see coming uh, off the uh, um, infralateral trunk, which usually has two branches running anteriorly and inferiorly to the superior optic fissure of um, um, rotundum and the valley. This again is an uh, endoscopic picture depicting the obtusence nerve, the interdual um, force of the obtusence nerve, which, um, which the uh, mobilized uh, drubus um, ligament, which again is part of the, the roof of the Rellus canal. And this is six running behind the carotid on this side. Uh, and again, that's the uh, transdural uh, intra intracranial or cisternal perspective of six ascending and then entering the, the interdural um, aspect. This is just a, a, a just a general overview of the, the main uh, vasculature of the posterior fossa. I think this is um, a fairly fairly uh, fairly known uh, anatomy. Just um, the vertebral basilar system with um, the labyrinthine and sometimes subarcuate arteries running into the internal acoustic canal. Um, you have a duplicated SCA on the uh, on, on one hand side, um, and this is uh, this is probably just um, known anatomy. You see the uh, superior petrosal sinus running in the uh, in cesura, um, and merging with the basilar plexus in the cavernous sinus. I think this has been covered in a previous talk um, about microvascular decompression. I will not go into too much detail with this. Um, just for the sake of time, and this is in preparation for the, the petrosectomy part, just a, a view into the middle fossa. On the right side, you see the tentorium hole uh, at the level of the colliculi running um, anteriorly and entering the tent. Again, the ocular motor triangle, a superior petrosal sinus um, covering the forestry geminis um, and the uh, um, middle energy artery uh, in the floor of, uh, of the middle fossa. This is, um, again, just to show the, the, um, the cavernous carotid and the branches coming off of it. Um, again, you see the meningeal hypophyseal trunk with these branches. And again, you see um, a grubus ligament covering the obtusus nerve. And also the beginning landmarks. Um, and the left aspect of the picture, you see landmarks of uh, the, um, of Kawazi's approach, the anterior pistrosectomy quadrangular space, you see the mini, middle meningeal GSPN and uh, the arcuate eminence. This is again uh, a reflection of the trigeminal ganglion. Now you can see um, attaching to the lingula of the sphenoid on the right, you can see um, this um, the petrolingual ligament, which again is the landmark for the petrous um, ICA to become the short lestrum ICA and then the cavernous ICA. Again, Gruber's ligament covering six um, GSPN and a uh, nearly dehiscent uh, petrous ICA. This is uh, not a surgical view um, of, of the Kawazi's approach, but it's depicting most of the anatomy of the Kawazi approach. You have the forest trigeminis, you have the tendon largely remo uh, removed and the superior petrosal sinus still covering it. Um, you see the uh, contents of the internal acoustic canal, seven and eight in the intermedius. You see the genu, the uh, labrum, cochlear exposed GSPN petrous ICA running uh, medially. Um, so this is the, uh, these are the, the landmarks, the petrous rich GSPN um, V3 anteriorly, and then um, cochlear and labyrinth um, as the posterior lateral margin of the approach. This is now switching to the um, posterior fossa. Um, again, an anatomical perspective, not really a surgical view. Uh, on the right hand side, um, sub cerebellar or retrosigmoid um, exposure you would get here. You see uh, the uh, ascending um, branches of, um, of 11. You see 12 in the middle right over the 
um, over the uh, the full segment of the vertebral artery, and you see um, nine and ten ascending to the jugular foramen. This is um, again. This probably has been covered by um, Max Munistrup, but brainstem uh, anatomy. These are just the uh, the um, the cranial nerves. Um, the, um, the ocular motor nerve protruding from the uh, interpeduncular fossa, then you have bow running um, around the midbrain, the level of the superior colliculi. In the brachial pontus, you have five. Um, then the pontum mesencephalic fissure, you have six ascending uh, systernally. And then going from medial to lateral, you have facial intermediates and, uh, and vestibular cochlear nerve. And then post and pre olivaris sulcus, you have um, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then this is the one with this that out. This is uh, again another perspective on the um, on the right hand side, um, mainly focusing on the internal acoustic canal and the jugular foramen. You see even uh, five in the petrosal vein complex in the uh, supralateral um, aspect of the syrinx. And again, you can see the uh, posterior lateral sulcus, um, post olivary sulcus, where nine and ten, um, nine, ten, and eleven now extending from an anterior to the olive, you can see um, the various rootlets of 12 descending to the upper glossy canal. This is uh, yet another detail with a bit more vasculature. You see the, the, the blocculus um, and the labyrinthine artery uh, entering the um, internal acoustic canal. You see, um, again, the core segment, you see the pica loop, the tonsilla loop um, on the left-hand side of the picture. Um, and this is the beginning of a transmeatal approach. Um, the um, exposure of the, of the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve, uh, intermediate and facial nerve in the internal auditory canal. And this is the, um, the usual distribution within the canal. Um, in this picture, we have a labyrinthine artery. We have not subacute artery, which usually um, ends in the, in the petrous face, in the, in the uh, posterior face of the petrous bone in this level. And again, this is a, a focus on, on the jugular foramen uh, on the other side with the ascending fibers. You see there's two, uh, there's a nervous, there is a, a venous part um, and, a, and, a, um, and a nervous part, depending on the classifications are the two nervous compartments or, or one nervous compartment and the glossopharyngeal is entering uh, the jugular foramen um, separately on the superior aspect, which is better seen here. So you have this um, dual ridge, which um, connects with the um, petrous and the, uh, the occipital um, um, uh, crest of the jugular foramen and separates the jugular, the nervous part of the jugular foramen into two aspects. You see the ascending um, common trunk of the um, accessory nerve and anteriorly um, in an anterior um, um, direction you see the uh, hyperglossal fibers um, descending to the hyperglossal canal and the occipital condyle. This is uh, yet another focus on the vasculature. You see the uh, medial and lateral um, segment of the pica. Um, and then further down you have the, the uh, tonsillar segment and the core segment of the vertebral artery. In the background behind the hypoglossal nerve. And this is just the extracranial extension here looking into the obex. Um, um, the uh, the uh, extracranial perspective of the contents of the hypoglossal canal and the jugular foramen. And as I understand, the next talk will be on jugular foramen. So I thought this would be a nice picture to finish this rapid overview to keep the schedule and uh, to um, show some anatomy of the diffusal region. Um, I really, I'm very grateful for this for this talk, for all the mentors. A fantastic time in, in Pittsburgh. Obviously, um, the mentorship I received from from Juan, from Paul, and, and, and Carl, the friends I made. I have to thank Maximiliano and Nunes, who's also faculty on this course, for lending me some of his uh, fantastic pictures and all the friendship and um, and colleagueship we we shared over the years. Um, and also many many thanks for my. Um, my new mentor, Sebastian, in Paris, with whom I started just working this year. Um, and um, hopefully, there's much more to come in the next years. Thank you very much.
Th thanks, Stefan. I think that was beautiful and I believe inspiring for uh, some of the younger uh, uh, attendees in the audience. Some of them are commenting on your beautiful illustrations and some of them are asking on give, giving us, can you give us tips on how to take such clear, clean and shining cadaveric images? First, I, I, I would say, and Dr. Rotten uh, used to say this, he didn't like the word cadaveric when we're doing dissections. Some people even call cadaveric lab. I hated that name because we're not doing cadaveric dissection. We're doing anatomical dissection using cadavers or specimens, but this is anatomical dissection. And it's such an art as you have nicely demonstrated. You're gonna give us a couple tips? Well, you see it in, in, in every Roton paper. It's, in, it's a mix of um, well, the, the circumstance. So you have to have um, good quality from photography, from, from preparation, from injection. The, the specimen has to be um, in a good state. So it's, I think it's everything coming together. Um, and then you have to be patient and, and, and do the dissection and have a plan also for the dissection. You should, you should know what you want to achieve with the dissection, whether you just want to follow surgical steps or whether you want to dissect everything in layers as in an anatomical dissection. That's how I studied my, my dissection in your lab was mostly understanding the anatomy and then following um, in later stages, more following uh, surgical approaches. Fantastic. Be beautiful. For those in the audience interested, just please, please join us tomorrow. We'll have a full session on uh, lab work and some of the techniques. As uh, Dr. Lieber mentioned, is everything is important from having a high quality specimen to do very careful meticulous dissection to then take perfect photogra photography of, of those uh, dissections. And then even post-processing of the images can also, can also help. So Stefan, thanks so much. Uh, Thank you for having me. You may you may go back to sleep now, and, uh, and then I'll call you some more tomorrow. Thank you very much. Very good. I will see you. We'll see you. 